Welcome to another episode of the Lone Recruiter Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Clementson, and if you're a recruiter out on your own or just lacking general advice or mentorship, you've come to the right place. Our episodes are designed to give you the motivation, the strategies, and the support you need to become the very best Lone Recruiter. So join us, grab a cup of coffee, and let's take your desk to another level. Now today, I want to highlight to you, as it was highlighted to me yesterday, that people will not judge you on your best moments. They will judge you on your worst. Such a powerful statement. I'll give you some context. Yesterday, I'm in the office and I looked out the window and I said, oh, I know that guy. And um, and I said, oh, it's a real shame. He's like such a nice guy. You get along with him, have great moments, real fun. Um, but every now and then just turns into a massive cock bag. We'll just do stupid shit that's super arrogant will just kind of come at you, you know, left of field with some real aggression. And you just go, ugh. Like, it kind of just leaves you feeling, ugh, icky. And Aaron in my office, who's been on this podcast before, he's a Buddhist. He's very wise. He's a very wise man. He just said to me, Brett, people, you can't judge people on their best moments. You've got to judge them on their worst. And I said, oh, my God, it's true, right? Like, that's 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 the core of their, their, their character. If, if they've got that within them to be an absolute prick and a dick, whatever – Kind of, you kind of walk away with a feeling that that's who they're about, and that might only be at one percent of their time that the, of their interactions with you. But that one percent will feel like it'll overarch any other good times you have. And again, how do we relate this to recruitment? It's quite transferable, quite relatable because I feel like building relationships with clients is a like a friendship. It's like it's an interaction, right? And at the beginning, you get a brief. It might start off quite corporate and, and business-like, but if if that relationship um, builds and you get some runs on the board with them, you put some great candidates in front of them, they interview, they like them, they make offers, we close some placements, we get some you know people into their business, it's quite quickly you can kind of really like each other. Like, this guy's helping my business. We go, shit, this guy's giving us business. Like, it's a mutual kind of... Um, love, right? Like we're both winning out of this and there's a nice feeling around that. And, and it's, again, I think in those times, really, really bloody easy to look and feel great about what you're doing. Let's go have some lunch. Yeah, high five. We're killing it. Da, da, da. That's the easy part. Of course, you know, you've got the recruiting. That's that's the work you got to do and they've got to interview and whatnot. But it's really, when times are good, it's easy to be good. When times are uh, uh, being favorable to, favorable to you, um, it's really easy to look and behave in a way that is really positive, um, helpful, kind, fun, light, all those sort of things because there's no real drama in the mix. So it would be safe to say at that point, like, we're having a great time, this is a good relationship. And I think at the core of this episode, it's about, you know, um, if we're going to bring this back to recruitment, it's about trust, right? Like, this is this whole, like, people aren't going to judge you on their best moments, they're going to judge you on your worst I think that the core of that is like a trust thing. Um, can I trust this individual? Am I going to trust in their consistency? All those sort of things. And I think within recruitment, the thing that came to my mind around this is when you're having these moments with clients, things are going really well. Blah, blah, blah. And you get that call. Hey, Brett, um, remember Georgie, who we placed in this role? Hasn't worked out. For X, Y, Z reasons, we need a replacement. Boom. Up until this point, it has been peachy. But I can tell you right now, this is this moment of truth, right? This is like, this is our worst moment. Are we going to take this situation, a little bit of pause in, in, in all of the good stuff? It's not your fault. These things happen. Our products are people and they, they, they behave and act and, and do things on their own volition. Um, but we have a lot of control over how we re- react to this situation. Too often I've seen recruiters and I, or heard of recruiters who just don't follow through with their replacement. And why do I know this? Because when I speak to clients and they always point to the replacement guarantee and go, oh, they're not worth anything. And I, I ask them, why is that not worth anything? And they say, because you'll never replace it. And I just think clearly you've been hurt in the past by other recruiters. You've had all this great fun. You've made placement. Things are great. And then when the candidate hasn't worked out, you know, and the and the recruiter hasn't followed through with the replacement, you know, relationship over. You know, that client is hurt. 
they're frustrated, they're out of pocket. It's 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 um yeah, trust is gone. So in light of this, you know, if you want to really if you feel like the key to your success is building strong and deep and long relationships with clients, which is exactly what the secret sauce is in recruitment, this is that moment of truth, right? When you get that call that says we need a replacement and it's it's valid, like they haven't performed They've done something, whatever that might be, you know, this is when you go, right, I'm going to replace this ASAP. Don't shy away. If you're sitting there right now and you're listening, covering your eyes, covering your ears, and you're going, oh, my God, I've got so many replacements to do, stop for a moment and think, fuck, I've got so many replacements to do. Those clients, if you do not replace them, will hold that against you for the rest of eternity. They will never trust you again. They will never want to work with you again. They might have to work with you for, because of a PSA or they, you know, whatever. They try and move on, but there isn't. You've been warned. You've been judged because they think they're not replacing this person. Now I get that sometimes we do our best to replace, and a client's not willing to do it. Different scenario. I'm just saying, if you have a replacement to do, here's what you do. Okay, that sucks. Can we book a time to run to dissect it and then just rebrief it? Yes, and we book a time. And we go in and we say, client, what happened? What happened? Was was it the candidate? Was it the skill set? Was it you? Did, did, did that was it not? Did you overpromise? Where are we at? We've got to work out why this happened. And once you worked out why this happened, you go, okay, do we need to adjust the brief at all? And if we do need to adjust the brief, we do, we tweak it, whatever, and then we move on. The importance of that meeting is that the client goes, fuck, he's got my back. They've got my back. Like we were having a great time problems happened, they've come in and they've said, let's go and re- resolve this problem. If you can resolve this issue for them ASAP, guess what? They will. That That is that moment of truth. You solve that issue. That's the only real hurdle you're going to have here. And if you can get over that in, with flying colors, you have passed the test. You have passed the friendship test and you will be. A, they will be a loyal customer. Why? Because there's so much noise and shit and like promise out there in the world. But when, when push comes to shove... People want integrity. They want to trust that you know what you're giving them is is worth, and when they pay you, that it's worth it because they're gonna have a bum in the seat. It is as simple as that. So, you know, um, again, just remember, clients are not gonna judge you on the good times, on the best moments, on the placements. They're gonna that's gonna weave into it, but when they're really gonna judge you, when they're really gonna cement their their love or hate for you and recruiters in general, is when shit hits the fan. Candidate doesn't work out and you decide to replace it or not. You're doing not just a service to yourself and and your and your billing potential in your desk because you're going to have all these amazing clients. You're actually doing us as a recruitment uh, sector in, in its entirety a massive favor. Do not let yourself or your peers down by not doing the right thing and following through on whatever replacement you need to do. Okay? It's a feeling. People have feelings and how they feel in those moments is what's going to determine whether they work with you again or not. So I hope you got something out of today's episode. Um, A little bit of a rant, a little bit of a, you know, but at the same time, I think everyone needs to hear it. And, and, And again, it's a small but easy thing to address. Integrity and just do the right thing. That's all I have time for you today. I hope you got something out of it. Like, share, subscribe. As always, have an amazing day and may all your deals.